Welcome to my dad's car. Enjoy. Welcome to My Dad's Car, a podcast discussing our personal relationship with automotive nostalgia. And you know what? It doesn't even have to be about your dad's car. It can be your mum's, your grand's, your parents', guardians', or even a neighbour's. If it made an impression, let's talk about it. Sorry, gents. Sorry to keep you. Not at all. That's all right, though. We're, we're a bit early, aren't we? So, John, as in, as in John, you obviously met each other because I was um, rudely not in the room. We've said our hellos, yeah. Yeah, where were you? We've said, yeah, we're, we're, we're best friends. We're going to kick you out, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I was, um, so yeah, complete uh, transparency. I'd just eaten a uh, a quick chicken salad wrap and I was like, oh, there's a little bit in my tooth. What I'll do, I'll just go and get that out now. <laughs> Do you know what? Oh, I nearly stole a chicken drumstick from the fridge, but I thought I'd be early. It's funny you mention that. I just literally made a couple of rolls for myself. And uh... Oh, come on, guys. This is not fair. <laughs> All I've got supplies-wise is this. Very nice. That will do. <laughs> but no, tell me, what do you want me to tell you? Obviously, the idea of the podcast is it's called My Dad's Car. It's not strictly about your dad's car as such. So I mean, it could be about your dad's car, but if you prefer to talk about your mum's car, your nan's car, your neighbour's car, whatever. But it's about kind of memories rather than what you're driving at the moment, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's that's actually no problem at all. Um, what I'm going to do, I'll give you all like my background story, all the people that sort of influenced me with cars. Because um, I've got quite a few uncles and stuff who were actually into their old cars. so. I don't know if you know, but I was born in Zimbabwe. Okay. Um, but I was raised here, so I'm British and everything. But we've got quite a lot of um, family over there. I've got an uncle who, mum's brother, uh, up until about just before COVID or during COVID, he sold his Morris Minor, which used to be his daily driver. It's like a pastel blue and he's never got rid of it. And he was like, no, I'm going to restore it. After about 30 years, he decided actually, do you know what? I'm going to get rid of it because I'm not actually going to use it. So he, he actually sold it and um, it's been restored and put back on road, which is quite nice. But it's always like things like that, where you've got family like that. You're like, oh, yeah, oh, I've got to do my own little project, you know. Is that a decision that he regrets or was the time right? Well, the thing is, is he's in his 70s now. So he's like, ah, oh, I never got around to doing it. It used to be his daily driver. So it used to be fine in that. And it was a bit like how I had my Mark Van Gogh. Mm. Had an issue, come off road and always intended to put it back on. But, you know, with him, he never actually got round to it. Whereas with me, um, you know, I had a little push from a mate of mine and I actually stuck it in and got it sprayed and, you know, Bob's your uncle, you know. So I think he does regret it. He, he would have liked to have got it back up and running and enjoyed it now. And, um, yeah, it's just one of those things. Prices got a bit expensive. So. Yeah, it's a big project, isn't it? When you sort of put it all down onto paper and weigh up how much time it's going to take as well and it's a big decision yeah yeah i can understand why you would part ways rather sadly but i mean where, where he's based he's based in the middle of africa so in zimbabwe like it's landlocked you haven't got like salt or anything like that but even then you know <laughs> with a car that old mm. you've got rust yeah and uh it just got to that point he was like look you know what either you put you know, so much savings into it or but definitely in his heart if he could have kept it that would have been the way to go I had a similar thing here with my dad when I was about three years old. So that's what, 43 years ago, giving away my age. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad had a little mini 1275. Yeah. And um, he also used to use that as his daily driver before I was born. Then he stuck it in the garage and he bought something else, which was a Fiat, but we won't tell him. <laughs> okay. Fiat 126 that every time we went onto the motorway would break down. Guaranteed, <laughs> absolutely guaranteed. No matter we're going wedding, we're going anywhere. If you hit that, something that starts with an M <laughs> that has a hard shoulder, it wanted to park on the hard shoulder. And that's what would happen every time. <laughs> but um, but he got rid of the um, mini, and I remember him uh, sort of fixing it up for sale. It had like a rust on the wing, a big hole, and he got this wire mesh, and then he sort of tacked it on, and then he put filler over it and sprayed it up. And I was like, this is so cool! You're like you're making a car, you know. And um, when he sold it for 350 quid, I was so gutted. I was like, no, 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 keep it, keep it. So that's why I bought my own. <laughs> Would you say that's your earliest car memory, as in, of sort of family-wise, or is there anything that sort of sticks in the mind? Yeah, yeah. 
I think that's my earliest. Yeah, because it's stuck in my mind. So, I mean, we only live two roads away from my old house. When I drive past it, I see the garage yeah. and I'm like, that's where it all happened. You know, like it's, 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 it's a strong memory. Though. That's definitely my earliest memory, without doubt. Before that, yeah, nothing. <laughs> you mentioned the Fiat 126. Was he fond of a small car? Was that kind of his bag? Um, yeah. Did he continue that? that small car cycle or did he kind of one day just go out and buy a Lexus or something? Oh, actually, no. Do you know, it wasn't a 126. It was a saloon. It was, or maybe it was called a 1200 or something. I'll I'll have to get the name, the the actual, I'll have to get the actual, it was a little saloon, but it was a small Mm. saloon. Um, And he liked, he liked small cars. He, he changed that for a Fiesta. And then um, after the Fiestas, he had about three Fiestas. And then I started driving and my mates got me, into Volkswagen. Slippery slope. <laughs> well, the thing is, is my first car was a, was a Fiesta because I just started using my parents' car. Um, but my best mate down the road and his best mate both had parents who had Volkswagens. So they were like, oh, look, look, you know, try the Golf. You know, it's really nice. And never actually drove it, but they were all right. And I was like, never really fell in love with them. But they dragged me to GTI International in um, Bruntingthorpe years ago and it was the first car show i'd ever been to um and when i saw mark ones there i was just i fell in love that was it i was like you know what i want one of those um and i went out to buy one i can't remember what happened but i ended up buying a mark three instead <laughs> it's a little bit different take us back to the fear as him so you're going to a family event or a wedding yeah. or whatever and who, who who's in the car i would be me my dad and my mum, this was, uh, well, my sister was also just a baby then. So I think, I think, I can't remember if she was born while we still had that car or when we changed for the Fiesta. So what, what colour is the car? The Fiat was a white, pure white. Okay. Uh, the Mini was a sort of a mustardy yellow, which was, I think, quite iconic for the 1275. And the Fiestas were like a, like a metallic baby blue. Okay. Like a, like a sky blue, if you like. Um, which is quite a common sort of Ford colour back in the day. So let's get in. Let's get in the in the Fiat. I'm guessing you obviously you're you're probably in the back. Yeah, can't imagine there's any seat belts. Um, were your parents smokers? No, no, no. John's dad was fond of a cigarette, so it was, it was like a disco in there. Ah, okay. No, no. With with our one, it was um, that it was like a dark blue velour um, interior. So everything was like a darkish blue, but it was it was pristine. One thing I have to say about my dad. He's always gone for cars that are like, you know, one owner or like they've come out of the factory, even though they've got 30, 40, 50,000 miles on the top. So he's always had very clean cars uh, and he's always looked after them really, really well. I think that's where I got my sort of um, love of them from, really, because I'm like, oh, no, you've got something wrong in your car. It bugs me. You know, and I think that's what he had. It used to bug him. And he's like, oh, look, there's a scratch on the car. I mean, I remember when he actually... He had, he had his uh, Mark 1 Fiesta re-sprayed um, once. And I remember we went to collect it. And this was very soon after I'd started driving. I'll make sure that we look after this fresh paint, beautiful fresh paint. And I drove, and being a new driver, I drove along a road that was newly tarmac. And when I parked up, I saw the little splatterings of tar on the, on the sills. Oh, God. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't leave this like this. So I washed the car and it wouldn't come off. Now, I didn't know about polish and all that kind of stuff. So I went in and I got my mum's little scouring hat. <laughs> and I scoured the two little front corners of the sills. And, oh, my God, the lacquer looked terrible. And I remember showing my dad, going, look, well, I don't understand it. And he goes, you're not supposed to use, you know, a scrubber. He goes, you're supposed to use polish. I'm like, well, polish, what? I don't know. That was quite embarrassing. Um, we didn't get that. I assume your suitcase is on the doorstep the next morning. Oh, mate, you know what? Oh. <laughs> it was a bad feeling i remember once i had a car which i kept in good condition in my opinion um and then one day i think i'd parked it somewhere overnight gone to collect it the next morning and someone had kind of keyed it all the way around oh. um not too sure why but it happened happens to all of us doesn't it? i guess at some yeah. point. um so i got it all re-sprayed and stuff which wasn't cheap and I remember I picked it up and it looked absolutely pristine. Got it back to mine um, and I used to reverse into my garage. I was reversing into my garage and I had my push bike 
used to just sit at the side of the garage. No. Handlebars around. No. Um, oh, and can... the handlebar, the edge, <clears throat> you know, you get like the rubber guards. I don't know what they're called, um, but the bits that go on the, the end of the handlebar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The one on the right hand side was kind of perished because it was so old. Um, and because always you put the bike down, it wears it away. Yeah. So you, you know where this is going, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> It's painful. Oh man, I can't. It's hurting already. Reversed in, and I think it hit. Um, I think it just caught the back wing. Really strange because I literally have done that maneuver, God knows how many times, with no problems at all. But uh, yeah, that happened, and uh, <laughs> another war wound for the old for the old girl. <laughs> oh man, that must have hurt. Oh, I can feel the pain already. Yeah, it hurt the wallet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, gosh, that's the problem. Once you've got a car looking how you want it, and then if you have a little dink or something, you're like, well, it's ruining the whole pack. Yeah, it's true. Whereas if you've got something which has got a few scuffs on it, yeah. like Andy will remember when I first met him, uh, me and one of my best mates, we came down for a photo shoot and he's got a Mark 1 convertible Rivage and I had a just a Mark 1 convertible Clipper. Same, similar colours and everything and everything, but... His is worth like 10 times the price of mine. You know, mine was like a two and a half grand car. His is like a 20 grand car, you know, but it, it was just like, I used to use mine as a daily. And because it had scuffs on the bumper and it had stone chips, you could almost enjoy it more because you'd put your foot down on the motorway or, you, you know, you'd enjoy it. When you got something a little bit too pristine, you're like, oh, no, no, I don't want to get stone chips off. Oh. That truck's four miles ahead of me, but I've got to stay a little bit further back so I don't get no stone chips. You know, like, you're just constantly panicking, um, which is a shame. Yeah. Yeah, there's de- there's definitely there's definitely a thing, isn't there, of just driving bangers around. There's there's a definite logic to that and not having to worry about it at all. I agree, especially if you live in London as well. So, Asim, we're, uh, we're in a blue v- velour interior inside a Fiat, yep. which is white. Yeah. I'm guessing your dad's driving, is it? You're in the back? Yeah, always always dad driving. I'll be in the back. Mum will be in the passenger seat. Um, any any music? Oh, no. Complete silence. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember, actually. I don't remember there being music. I think it was complete silence. All I remember was, I think we used to keep the music off so we could hear the, hear the engine started spluttering, you know, like you just hear it. <laughs> and that's it, you know. And then you start feeling it juddering, and then that's it. All right, straight off onto the hard shoulder. So you hit the hard shoulder, and is your dad kind of mechanically? Would he go for the bonnet to have a look, or would he? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd have a look. He'd have a look. He used to, <laughs> when he had the mini before. He actually went to evening classes to learn how to fix it, so he could fix it up to yeah. sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, he, I think he used to tell us it would be uh, to learn how to fix it up, so he'd always keep things going, you know. But. Um, yeah, no, I think he just wanted to pick it up to sell it. So he'd know a little bit. So he'd like get under the hood. He'd have a little look, maybe sort of poke the carburetor with his finger a bit or something and just sort of see. And then he'd call the... Uh... Quick poke and a sharp intake of breath. Uh... Yeah. And then the thing is, is then, then back in those days, there's no mobile phones. You know what it had to be? You had to walk up to that orange box with the phone in SOS. it. SOS. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh my god! So presumably, as in, mm. like, if you were taking a trip somewhere away with four of you in the car and your luggage and stuff, space was probably a bit of a premium. Would it? Would it um, not? Be? Yeah, yeah. Was your dad a small man or? Oh, small. I'm like the biggest one in the house, so it's just like, yeah, we're all really tiny, five foot, under five foot five, because I'm five five. <laughs> okay. So we're a tiny bunch of Indians. <laughs> so the mini was actually quite roomy then. Well, the thing is that. Because I was three by the time it was already parked up in the garage, I don't actually remember going out in the Mini. I remember sitting in the Mini many times in the garage, but I don't remember the Mini out on road. I remember the, the Fiat. So that's the first one I actually remember. So he kept the Mini for a while after getting the Fiat, did he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I actually remember him bringing the Fiat home because I remember seeing it outside the house and going, that's our new car. But I never actually remember going out in the Mini. Although we must have, we must have many times, but I just don't remember it. But then when I was three, you know, how much do you remember when you're three? <laughs> and as you got older, as in, where, where did he go next in terms of his vehicles? Did he keep the Fiat for a while? He kept the Fiat for quite a while. Um, that ended up getting just 
no matter how you looked after Fiat, they used to rust really bad. Yeah. And because it was white, mm. you know, white shows rust yeah. straight away with those little brown stains. So it started looking pretty bad. And I remember him saying, look, you know, we need to change it. We need to change it. And he comes home one day with a Fiesta. <laughs> I was like, that looks totally different. I've never seen one of these. Before. What is that? But it was quite nice. And it, because he bought a top of the range, he bought a gear. Very nice. So all the inside had a very nice, again, velour interior. It had all like the walnut dash and stuff. And it was like, hmm, this is really nice. You know, going from the Fiat to that was like, oh, you know, very nice. Um, that means business. Oh, he does. He, he does. You know, like he's always bought nice cars. Like, he's always bought a good spec on a car, usually. Mm. Um, so like where he bought the gear, we had that. I mean, that was a reliable car. We must have had that. That was a Y Reg, and I think he he got it when he was like I don't know four years old or something. Five, maybe not even five years old. I think it was fairly new when he got it, and then he just kept that for yonks, you know, yonks and yonks and yonks. And we sold it. We sold it for about three hundred and fifty quid to a guy from a dodgy council estate. He came to buy it. And uh, I, I kid you not, he bought it at half past five. At night, sorry. Yeah. He came so late. He kept saying, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming late. And, wow. And what it was is at one point he said, oh, can you bring the car down to the estate? And we're like, no, but that's like, no, I'm not coming down to that estate. That is, you know, you're going to come back with no, no clothes, no car, no nothing. Like, you know, they'll finish you. Um, maybe his other cars are fit and he broke down on the motorway on the way to you. That's why he got there at half 12. Maybe. May- well, you know, it wasn't even that far away. And he bought it, and then about three months later, the police came knocking at our door, and they go, oh, you know, like, you won't believe this, but we just wanted to check, do you own this car anymore? We're like, no, 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 why? What's happened? And they go, it's been used in a bank robbery. We're like, you can't be serious. How, who would use a 20-year-old 1.1 Fiesta gear for a bank robbery? I mean, you wouldn't be able to ram anything with it. You wouldn't be able to get away quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh don't know what happened after that <laughs> so um did your dad use a car for work or so did he have to kind of think about that as well or no he was working for the civil service at the time so he used to just jump in the tube and go straight down to central so he only ever needed it outside work so i think there might have been a time i have to double check with him but i think there was a time where he didn't actually have a car as a daily i think when the mini went off-road and before he actually bought the fiat i think there was a little space of time where they just made do with cabs and public transport just for a bit. And did your mum ever do a test or was she just kind of not fussed on driving at all? Oh, no, 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 no. So years later, when my dad had the Fiesta, um, my mum had always, when she was younger in Africa or whatever, she'd done her test, she'd passed. Oh, okay. And you could use that licence here. It was no problem because British colony and all that. Um, and drive on the same side of the road and everything. But... <laughs> she never used to feel comfortable about driving because she hadn't driven for like 15 years or whatever. Mm. So when she first started driving, she's like, okay, everyone has to be silent. No talking in the car while I'm driving. She used to like drive us around. And that. So she got, she got comfortable again, but then she used to like automatic. Yeah. She has a drive, she has a manual license, but she's always like automatic. So dad bought her a, uh, here's, one, here's one from the past, a Vauxhall Cavalier. Lovely. I think that would have been possibly a Mark II or a Mark III. It was a Y-Ridge. Nice. Yeah, Mark II, I think. Is that the saloon, the hatchback one or the one with the boot? No, we had the hatchback version in a, oh God, in a very... They used to do a really sort of aggressive um, blue, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll say aggressive. It was like a sort of, like a pale sort of... It was, it was very flat. Yeah, like someone had used to chalk to paint. Yeah, it. it was a very flat sort of blue. Mm. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to look around my room. Just... <laughs> there, that is it. It was, it yes, wasn't. That's it. Yeah. Similar to this, <laughs> a little bit darker than that. Maybe the edges of that of that microfiber might be. It was, it was. That was a scary car. That was a scary car because it never stopped. It wouldn't stop. I know it's a Vauxhall, but it just kept going. It lasted so long. And uh, when it... My brother uh, went through a phase of a couple of, I think two or three Cavaliers. I remember there's, a, there's quite a decent story. Um, going along motorway, went to open the sunroof, clean off, 
just flew straight off. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's quite a funny story. Um, oh, God, the poor person behind them. <laughs> That's assuming that yeah, well, that's assuming that the the windscreen, uh, sorry, the sunroof didn't um, decapitate someone on oh the way my. down the yeah, yeah, no. cyclist. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no. Um, they don't make them like that anymore, do they? <laughs> n- no, they make them that they actually keep their sunroofs on. No, I tell you why. I think we went for a, a Vauxhall uh, Cavalier. My mum's sister, who lives in Tooting, South London, her husband used to get company cars. And he used to go for the Cavalier every two or three years when he was changing it. He goes, oh, no, no, I've got the new Cavalier. I've got the new Cavalier. And because he had it from brand new, you know, I remember when he got his E-Reg Cavalier in red. And he was like, look, I've got the new one. And it was, I think it was like an SRI. It was a bit more sporty. Man. He was so proud of it. He even, he even had the Vauxhall badge and said, I've got a Cavalier. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> he was so proud of it. And it was like, ah. Oh. That's shameful, isn't it? Yeah, I know, I know. When they stopped making Cavaliers, he got a Vectra. Um, but he passed away quite young. So that was the last car he had. Um, but yeah, we always used to... I think that's why my mum my wanted a Cavalier. Cause she's like, oh, no, no. Sister's husband has a nice car. That's comfortable. And then after that, we convinced her to get a BMW. So she had a couple of BMW E30. Nice. So she was quite... Very nice, yeah. Quite a cool lady. Yeah. She had a white one first, which was a real... Um, yeah, it was really cool. Um, but then after that, sort of, you know, they get the rust underneath mm. and that. So it failed MOT mm. one time after a few years. Mum was just like, said to my dad, look, I really like that car. Let's go find another one like it. So dad looked around, looked around, he found an h Ridge one, which is like um, very, very similar to Dragon Green on the Golfs. Mm. Yeah. A really nice dark green. It had cream, not leather, just velour interior. Cream, velour interior, because, you know, that, we're not really hot on the leather. And it was a lovely mm. car. We kept that for years until the same thing happened. The rust underneath just deemed it beyond, yeah. you know, you just couldn't. I mean, even our mechanic said to us, he goes, Look, he goes we'll pass it this year, but next year you're not going to pass it. On that team. <laughs> so you're going to have to change it. And even the next year he's like, you know what? I can still get it through this time, but you haven't got any more years left. And then we had to change it. So, which is a shame really, because, Again, you know, we like the car. Mm. Yeah, beyond economical repair. That's... So now she's got um, she's got a fifty one plate BMW, which is obviously not an E thirty, is E forty six or whatever it is, which which is all right. She she she's happy with it. It's U less compliant, so she doesn't even have to change that. Solid car, isn't it? I was going to say with the Vectras, that's a real um, reminds me of the police Vectras sort of CID unit. They used to like those, didn't they? Very much so, yeah. Oh, God. That, and I don't know why, I always think they used to have Sierras as well. Do you remember Sierras? Well, the police? Yeah. To be inconspicuous. Yeah, yeah. Dodgy geezers. Trying to be inconspicuous in a, in a, in a, in a Sierra. Did you, um, did you ever get involved choosing the cars with your parents? Or they kind of, they sort of made their decision? No, no, they made the decision. That's very Indian for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was fine. It was fine when it came down to me buying a car. It was very much like, well, what do you want to buy? You know, it's going to be your car. You're going to drive it. We're not going to drive it. So, what do you want? You know, so very supportive in that regard. But I didn't really uh, have a choice on their cars. If we, um, so you mentioned your dad's kind of um, talking to you about polish earlier when you attacked his Fiesta with a scourer. Um, when it came to kind of car cleaning, was he? Would, is that something he'd do himself or would he take it oh no him? no he'd do it himself he'd, he'd do it himself and that's probably where I got it from I mean look very basic bucket sponge and a nice scourer you know sort of sh- well no no we learned not to use the scourer we leave that out now um, <laughs> although I do use it on my chrome bumpers because it takes off the little specks of rust really well but we won't worry about that um, but yeah no um, it was literally just nice sponge bucket and hose it down and just dry it off very basic that's still what we do nowadays you know like we don't i don't have a snow foam kit or i don't have anything super duper but we do like putting a little bit of sort of autoglim polish or whatever mcguire's here or there every now and again with summer come so we do do a little bit but it's all none of it's machine you know it's all old school by hand so which, which is all right mm-hmm. 
So going back to, um, this is the biggie, really, that we always ask. Uh, was your dad a, a finger tapper on the steering wheel? He had no music. That's a good point. Could have been singing away in his head, though. Hmm. No, he wasn't a finger tapper. Unless he had Tourette's. He got Tourette's, yeah, he just used to swear at other people. Tapping along to the tappets <laughs> of the Fiat engine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. No, do you know what? He's, he's too nice a driver. He stops and lets people out. The worst is <laughs> driving down the main road. Somebody wants to come in from the side road. He'll stop. Yeah, come in. You come. What are we doing? <laughs> so he's a very considerate. Very. He always thinks of other people too much. So, so I don't like him driving now because uh, it's like you can get anywhere in half the time. That's quite nice. That's a, that's a bit of a dying trait, though, isn't it? Oh, it is. People letting people out. The very old school. Very old school. But then that's the older generation for you, man. Yeah. They are nicer in that regard. Um, How do you think the the Mini has li- lived up to expectation? Obviously, I'm guessing you bought the Mini because your dad had one. Is that was was that the that thing? Literally, yeah, that was literally it. And then when I bought it and brought it home, he goes to me, he goes, "Oh, by the way, mine didn't have the same front as that. Mine had the square front. You bought a round front." I was like, "Doesn't the thing matter? I've got a Mini now." And um, do you know what? It's lived up. It's it's exceeded expectations leaps and bounds. I've never, ever thought I would love that car as much as I do. Um, Where did you find that one? Sorry. Was that out of just the free ads or something like that or an auto trader? That was on, it was either Piston Heads or eBay. I can't remember which. I think it was Piston Heads. How long you had it? Four, four years, something like that? Yeah, about four years now. About four years. And what it is, I bought it pretty much already done. I just, it was the first thing I went to see in real life, actually. And I went to see it because it was only in like sort of uh, Romford sort of side. So it's not too far from me. It was about a 40 minute drive. So I was like, look, Dad, let's go and have a look. You know, thinking to myself, we'll go there. It's the first one I've seen. I'm not going to buy it. I got to it. I fell in love with it. I was like, this thing looks great. Took it for a spin. I was like, it's slow as anything, but I love it. You know, so I, 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 I made him an offer and I bought it. The, the way I explain to a lot of people who are in the VW scene, I say, look, if you're driving a normal car and you jump into a Mark 1, you get this feeling of like you've jumped into a go-kart. Yeah? I suppose you might get that with a Mark 2 as well, really. Um, but if you go from a Mark 1 goal and then you jump into a Mini, it's that same feeling again. So going from my convertible into the Mini, I was like, oh my God, I've gone from a big go-kart to a tiny little remote control car. Yep. This is amazing. And it's such a, it's so much fun to drive, even though... Have you been involved in minis, Andy, before? can't remember. Yeah, I have one. I bought from a friend of mine. And um, a few, yeah, a few things you should know about it. The Speedo didn't work and it had the noisiest exhaust in the world. <laughs> so basically, you just drove it flat out everywhere without a clue on how fast you're going. It had an MG Metro engine, so it's 1275. Oh, nice. Um, oh. I can still feel the metal from the seat backs in my back today. Like The seat padding had just slightly gone. It was a 25, so it was a silver one. had a matte black bonnet because the previous bonnet had had an incident. And, um, it wasn't a Mr. Bean, was it, the previous owner? It is going that way, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Padlock on the driver's door. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Love it. If, I could, if there's any way I can keep it um, and get some sort of exemption from Unis, I will keep it and I'll I'll keep it going. I do not want to change it. So uh, I, I will get another mini. That's kind of on my hit list. I'm going to have to wrap this up because I need to go back and do some do some work. Oh no! But um, thank you very much for joining us. No, hopefully I'll give you enough information. Just shout me and let me know if you need anything else. Good stuff. Thanks for your time, Asim. Yeah, thank you very much, man. Thank you for the invite. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. So yeah, that was obviously a, a fear that keeps breaking down. There's no real surprise. Not really, no. Um, and usually breaking down on the motorway is probably the worst place you can break down, isn't it? Especially in the 80s when there's no <laughs> there's no means to get hold of anyone. Yeah, absolutely. You'd, um, yeah, you may as well write a letter. And just say, yeah, Like Robinson Crusoe from the side of the M25. Pigeon. Yeah, yeah a letter in a, in a bottle, just throwing it at truckers as they go past, just hoping they'll stop. And obviously, yeah, the Mini, yeah, British classic, and he's he's now gone out and bought a Mini. There you go, yeah. So inspired... I think that's definitely a, a running theme. I think a lot of people get inspired, don't they, by what their parents drove and then go and try and grab one. Yep. But I think now we're probably getting to the point where it's so expensive, isn't it, to try and get 
well, it, it wasn't in uh, Azim's case, but you know, when people's parents have been driving Mark One Escort and that sort of thing, it's not achievable. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, he's followed that route, and um, yeah, obviously, Ulez is going to put pay to his his mini fun, but um, that could be your avenue back into a mini, Andy, making a. Uh... It could be making a, an offer he can't refuse. So, um, yeah, cool. Thanks, John. Good stuff. Thanks, Andy. And thanks to Azim for coming on. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, been good fun. And yeah, until the next time, here's the credits. Thanks for tuning into My Dad's Car. We're new at this and really appreciate you listening and supporting the podcast. If you enjoyed it, please click subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Give us a follow on social media. And tell your friends to tune in too if you think it will be up their street.